Mindful Heart Radio. I'm Annette McCoy. Joining me today is Marnie Perner. We're in for a fabulous show and it's an extended show today because once Marnie takes her leave, Rosemary Butterworth is going to join me and she has a very special meditation for us today. So grab your coffee and sit down or maybe you can listen to us in the background while you're doing something else. Whatever you choose to do, we thank you for being with us. If you are wanting to join in the conversation and we really enjoy people joining the conversation, please go over to the Angel Heart Radio Facebook page because that's where you can make the comments. I'd like to remind everybody that these shows should not replace your legal, medical, nor professional advice, nor your own sound judgment. Marnie and I give our, our own opinions and we're hoping that you will listen, absorb, and then make up your own mind about how you feel about what we talk about. And Marnie, today yes. we're talking about how do we deal with uh, life when there's joy and sorrow simultaneously? And I know that you've just experienced that recently. So it seems like a great topic. And I'm, it's something that touches us all yeah. from time to time. Absolutely. It's, um, you, you've got both sides of the coin all the time. So you've got your yin and your yang. And with joy... You also have sorrow and, and vice versa. And, and I think what it happens to people is if they're experiencing really big joys in their life at a time where they should be sorrowful, they also experience um, a fair amount of guilt. The guilt of the yeah. living. Yeah. Yes, it, it can be a tough one. I know a friend of mine years ago was saying that it was important that I was joyful when I was joyful, irrespective of how other people were. It's that balancing act though, isn't it? Because mm. I'm feeling joyful. I'm aware that somebody else is going through um, a, a totally different experience. Yeah. And you often feel guilty about feeling happy, mm -hmm. especially when something sad that's happened. And, and a lot of the sadness we're talking about is the, the sadness of the loss of a loved one or someone mm -hmm. you're close to. And, um, and that needn't be a person. Sometimes it's your animal. And you can feel a lot of grief about your animal. In fact, I also felt a lot of sorrow, um, possibly a lot more sorrow for my dog that passed a couple of years ago than I did over other people that had passed. Mm -hmm. And I think I realised she mimicked my mum's journey so she went off oh. for food. So it brought back a lot of memories of, of caring for mum because dad and I palliative cared mum in her last stages of life as well. And mm -hmm. it was that whole frustration about not being able to make her better and, and knowing it, it wasn't about an ego trip. It was just about, you know, what knowledge did I have that I could encourage her to eat? And honestly, I tried so many things <laughs> and she just, she'd had enough. She was ready to move on. And that was her choice. But at that stage, I was still trying to keep her here. I would say, mm -hmm. no, no, it's too early. You've just turned to 92. You're not ready. You know, I'm not ready. <laughs> Don't do this to And it was that whole whole journey of, of what can I do? And at the same time, because it was my first experience, and a lot of people may relate to this, it was my first experience of someone close to me dying. I mean, I'd mm -hmm. had death in the family, but I'd never been the carer or the immediate person with, right. with that person. So hers was classed as fragility. So she was going mm. through the final ends of life. And I thought that part of life was palliative, palliative care to me, meant, meant end of life. So I right. was asking the questions, what should I expect? Like I haven't nursed someone who's dying. So mm. what? How? what's the process? Like give me a protocol <laughs> so I'm aware of what's about to happen. Not mm -hmm. that it goes according to plan. It's a bit like your baby protocol. None of that goes to plan either. <laughs> but at least you have some expectation. Mm -hmm. And I kept asking people, what is, you know, what does it mean? What does the palliative care end look like? And I was getting responses to the effect of, oh, that just means your mother's dying. And I went, seriously, I know that part. That's not the bit mm -hmm. I need. I need to know <laughs> what happens. Right. Like, how is the process? I now mm -hmm. know it's called end of life care or end of life planning. 
I didn't right. know those words and no one grasped the fact that that was what I was asking. Uh -huh. I've done a lot of research since then, <laughs> so I know the right words. So if you're caring for someone, if someone you know is going through the end of their life, that's the terminology you use to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Because right? you sometimes need to know, like when they stop eating, when they stop drinking, all those, you know, life things that happen, you need to know how that flows so you're right. a little bit prepared as well because it's not just, oh, they suddenly decide to die. It just doesn't happen that way. They, the body shuts down gradually. Can do. When you're yes. going through that, you're grieving at the same time, but you're also trying to be stoic and strong for that person. But they're over it by then. Like They don't expect mm -hmm. you to be stoic and strong. And it's a hindsight thing, isn't it? I didn't know all these things at the time. No, you know them now. And that's, no, I know where, them now. that's where it's wonderful because you can pass on this knowledge to yeah. other people. Mm. Yeah. And I've actually done several. Um, I'm a community host for um, people. They, they get groups together. And they call them kitchen table discussions. And the kitchen table discussion is on subjects. And I've done two now on end of life care where I was the host asking people of their opinion and what, what did they go through and what was their expectation. So it kind of gave me that a little bit of an impetus and, and willingness to talk about the, the subject as well. Right. We're very fortunate, aren't we, to have these experiences and then be able to support other people through yeah. our own experiences. Yeah. That's what I love about Angel Heart Radio. And our audience gets the opportunity to share as well. So if you are listening and have something to share about joy when there is sorrow. And even, Marnie, when we are, when somebody passes and we're in that, we've, we're organising the formalities, there's a lot of, uh, there's lots of laughs, aren't there? And joy when yeah. we're remembering yeah. lovely um, experiences that have happened throughout that lifetime and it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for families and friends to come together yeah I can I can remember I'm, when my husband passed we were friends were helping me choose music and I said oh thank you because I've really felt that they were putting themselves out and a very dear family friend said I'm doing this as much of myself as for you yeah and yeah. That woke me up too. It was like, oh yes, I yes, I was a chief griever, but there were other people yeah. who were <laughs> She's my like, mother, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and you tend to take over, like you tend to be a leader. So, you know, if you if you're wearing that mantle, that's the mantle you want because you want everything done right, you want everything done correctly. And mm. um, yeah, like the funny things that you think to take. And, and, and it, today is about grief and, and sorrow and passing and, and reliving and, and things like that. And as you say, you must relive the person's life so that when you talk about them, you can talk about them more joyfully and knowing that, yes, they have passed, but we're here still, so we need still to live. Mm. So we can't be so, some people are so bound in their sorrow that they can't move forward. And um, talking does help with that. And sharing does help with that. But some people have a very private grief process. Um, I tend to be a more talkative kind of person. And, and I know my dad dealt with things much differently to me. And he's only just coming out of his grief tunnel. And that's four years. We've just celebrated four years um, or acknowledge the anniversary of four years. Because I won't celebrate the anniversary. I'll acknowledge it. But it's not wow. my celebration. My celebration is a birthday. I, and, yes. Yes. You know, I'll, I'll acknowledge that because it's around this time. I've just gone past my four-year anniversary. And um, Dad, I think, is just coming out. But I needed to talk about Mum. I needed to bring her name up all the time, whereas Dad went shut, mm. really shut. And, and even for the funeral service, Dad was very close. He didn't want to tell people. He didn't want to put in the paper. It was his wife, not anyone else's person. Mm -hmm. But it left a lot of us out so we had to sort of you know chop him along and say well look you kind of need to do these sort of things it's not all about you even though to him it was mm. and um and you do need to feel joy and and like because it's mum's anniversary and then we had a um a family member pass last week 
so we've just had her funeral as well but in my life at the moment there was so much joyful things mm. happening and you, you you felt a little bit guilty really being excited about it like I won a big award and I'm going out to Parliament House tonight for as a guest for Queensland Women's Week so there was all these great things coming up and yet some of the family members were having to go to the funeral and, and we watched it on video but so you did you did feel guilty being really really happy mm. and then you know that the person won't mind but that it's the perception of others that I think influences our responses sometimes. How are we being perceived when we're being all happy and joyful over here, but this has happened? Yes. So remember, it's not about other people. So you've got three kinds of businesses in the world. You've got your business, their business, and universal business. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be as impacted by other people's business. It's about you. It's your business. It's your life. And you know that the person that has passed will lovingly and graciously allow you to still live. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to pick up from. Right. So, yes, you're well aware that there's joy in your life as well as the sorrow. Sadness. Yeah, and sorrow. And it's the guilt, isn't it? You know, how do we deal with that guilt being able to say, well, okay, yes, um, this grief however I am going to celebrate the award it's a fantastic Marnie you know mm. you really I know <laughs> it was wonderful I'm the um <laughs> the Optimus International Morton North um inspirational woman of the year I mean it was huge <laughs> and it was also our big celebration of International Women's Day so there was a lot of busyness preparing for the event as well it wasn't just me receiving the award there was all the collation of, of everything that went towards having a, a large right. event. And and in the midst of it all, you're booking flights and thinking, oh, should I go, should I not go, you know, what's going to mm -hmm. happen? And and then my little granddaughter was hospitalised with a, an asthma attack and you go, oh, oh my God. <laughs> and at the back of it, you sort of push it all to one side and you put a different hat on and you go, oh, but I'm having such fun. Right. And, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and I think you have to acknowledge, so... You know, I'm a, I'm a stress buster, so I help people cope with their stress. I help them cope with their grief, with whatever's going on in their life and mm -hmm. their guilt and all the other bits and pieces that go through with it. And I, I say to people, there's nothing wrong with experiencing sorrow, grief, despair, despondency, all of those kind of, of emotions. They're a real emotion and they're, and they're very valid emotions, but mm -hmm. don't be them. So how about having an experience of those emotions but don't be the emotion, right? Because when you be the emotion, that's when you call on the universe to say, okay, well, this is who I am and this is what I'm projecting. So I'm going to attract all of that negativity to my person. And the stress bucket goes into overdrive. The adrenal response goes, well, what's the point? Because, you know, I'm useless. I'm, you know, I'm despondent. I can't get out of the chair. And then you start finding that your health is impacted. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in a really severe way. So you need to be able to say, okay, yes, I acknowledge that I'm sad and lonely. I acknowledge that I'm filled with grief. However, there were some beautiful flowers at the at the, at the um, funeral, or I I did the wake gave me the opportunity to share my sorrow with a lot of people that that also felt sorrow. So you had that communal sorrow going on, but in a more I'd say jovial way, but I don't mean in a disrespectful way. No. Because mm -hmm. it's at the wake and, and at the celebrations afterwards and, and at the celebration of life that people bring up funny stories that have happened yes. with their loved one, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you come together on a more um, harmonised group because you're all sharing things that meant something to you. Mightn't have meant something to someone else, but they're your memories that you're bringing forward of the time when such and such happened. Sure. I think they're the ones you supplant the yes. sorrow to. You go, yes, I'm feeling sorrow and I'm really grieving. However, look at the acknowledgement that this lady's had or this person's had or this pet's had of their life and, and the beauty and the gifts that they've given us in their lifetime. Right. We come together to celebrate a life and one of the 
wonderful things I think about of a memorial or a funeral is the coming together of friends over a long period so it's it's quite often a reunion and it's yeah. a reconnection and that's wonderful mm. uh, and I agree the sharing of the stories yeah and I, I know that when you're the pivotal person who, who you feel you're the only one grieving but you're not but you sometimes as I said you you, you take on the mantle of leader because I know with the, the group up north, the children all gathered around the dad, mm -hmm. right? And the children took over the leadership of a lot of the um, decisions and, and things that were going on. And in that capacity, you're not always relaxed enough to enjoy or to, to be jovial. And if you are, suddenly you, you, you get those guilts, you get that mirror neuron of, of the guilt, oh my God, I've laughed and it's a sad occasion. So I think you need to be very gentle with yourself and go, you know, there are going to be days of sadness and happiness and you mm. need to blend the two. Mm -hmm. So don't, um, and your anniversary blues, are, I mean, they're different again. So, and that's where I found rather than um, access or, or focus on the anniversary day, I focus on mum's birthday. Yes. Because to me, yeah. that was a happy occasion. The, the passing was not for me so happy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my why boys, would I celebrate that? My boys have done the same thing quite often, and yet my mother will acknowledge my husband's passing. That she brought yeah. it up again with me yesterday because it's 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 coming up tomorrow. Yeah, however, it yes, I've moved on. It, Barry's birthday is what yeah. we tend to celebrate, yeah. and yeah. I or know Mother's Day, you know, something Mark, that's more yeah. pivotal to their life rather than their passing life. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a good point. The thing is, once again, as we said at the start, it's individual. And mm -hmm. so we're sharing our thoughts and in the hope that it might help other people. Mm -hmm. anything, anything is individual, especially grief. And so there's no, yes, you wanted an idea of what to expect in palliative care. And I think that's wonderful. The thing is we all, it's, it's different. That, mm. That's a process, yes, and it can be similar. Our feelings and the way we deal with something is very much an individual situation. Yeah. And I think too, what, I mean, we're Angel Hub Radio, let's face it, we have angels and guides and mm. gifts and blessings around us forever and, and all the time. And we acknowledge it because that's who we are. So what you need to do is you need to identify what is a pivotal, we spoke about this off air, what is a pivotal memory that is a dead set angel message to you from that person? Mm -hmm. right? And they can be varied and wide. And what's yes. one of yours with Jim? What's, what's something that when that happens, you go, oh, Jim, you're here? Mm. Yeah. What I is it? Yeah, I agree. Look, something happened yesterday for me and my mother. I was travelling over to my mum's and I was talking to a friend who was explaining how she cleared this shelf of bottles and yet when she put her foot up, there was this bottle and she said, I can tell you it wasn't there and it was really important to her. Yeah. So we shared that and I said how I found often a dry geranium pointing ah. directly at my front port, at my front door. No way was, it, it had been placed, it wasn't the wind, you know, and I'd no. go, oh, thank you, Barry, being my, my late husband. Yeah. And yesterday I was at my mum's and I'd walked into the kitchen and here was a playing card on the floor and I picked it up, turned it over, and it was the king of clubs, and I immediately thought, well, hello, Dad. Now, my yeah. mum couldn't, couldn't explain how it got there. I mean, it was just... Just sitting there. Just yeah. appeared. So I said, well, I think it's a message from Dad. Um, I think she's still thinking about it because she was on the on the um, path of, well, I haven't played cards for a while. Yeah. She <laughs> she's she's looking at the practical looking, side of life. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I think we're very fortunate, Marnie, when we realise that, yes, they are messages. And I know mm. you've had a couple 
from your mum as well. Exactly. In the last couple of days, I was at a, a big event. I graduated from it. As I said, so much has been happening in my life that are positive and happy. I graduated from a small business course and we got the opportunity as a guest to go to a big event. And Ida Buttrose was the guest speaker. I mean, oh my God, that's so awesome. But, and just on a side note, I did manage to um, gift her one of my books signed, which was lovely. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> good, good. But, still, but anyhow, so she was being interviewed on stage by the, by the MC and they were sitting in nice, comfortable chairs. And we're at a big um, event hall so with big ornate ceilings it's at um, Eaton's Hill and it's a big function centre indoors it's not outdoors or anything and I doubt that they have a lot of birds in the venue it's just right. not that place you know they might be outside but not inside well anyhow I suddenly realised I was watching this feather just float down like this in front of the stage just off to one side where they were talking and I went oh my god because that to me are the angels and guides they're there, mm -hmm. they're talking to us, they're saying, hi, we're here, we're here as well. For me, it was, oh, mum, there's no show without punch, hey? You had to be what? here as well, but how awesome. And a lot of people didn't see it. Like, you'd ask, did you see the feather? And they go, well, feather? What feather are you talking about? But several at our table saw that feather. So I wasn't imagining it. And I, I meant to go up afterwards and take it off the stage, but then other things happened and I didn't. And then the second thing that happened, I was the next event I was at was our International Women's Day event. And... Um, where mum and I did the coffee chats, right? That was our, yes, our yes. gift to ourselves in her last, what became her last year of life. We just didn't know that. And um, wherever we went, there was a fly. <laughs> just no matter where we went, there was always a fly. And we always changed. Mum would say, oh, here's my friend back, you know. And um, there was a fly at the International Women's Day event, just at our <laughs> table, just flying around, buzzing at us all, getting in our way, we're flicking it out the way. And, and after a while I went, oh. It's mum, goodness me, it's mum saying hi, mummy. I'm here with you. <laughs> Bizarre, but they're a connection to a memory, so they yes. make you, even if they don't make sense to other people. So find That's your connection, right. find your memory uh, flags, and not everyone knows that money on the ground is a message from the angels. Now it mm. might be your particular angel. It might be just the angel saying, "Look, we've got you here. We're supporting you. You're on the right track. You're doing the right thing. You're noticing the messages that we're giving you to you." Mm. All right. So, you know, feathers and and money. I, I often say to clients, it's not as exciting to find a white feather in a white chookyard because it just doesn't seem as quite as exciting. But if you find a black feather in a white chookyard, well, that and that's awesome. Yes. Do you find feathers all the time? I do, yes. I love the feathers, and quite often I see it as um, ver verification or validation of a thought validation. that I'm having. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. And you can live in a place like I'm on acreage, and you'd think there would be feathers all the time, but we go for ages and not find feathers on the ground, and then all mm. of a sudden we'll start finding them. And I found one in my dad's unit the other week. I was over there doing something, and there was this tiny mm. little peach-coloured feather. Now, he's in a multi-storey unit complex, you know. He doesn't have birds. <laughs> and I just said to him, oh, mum's visiting. And he said, I hope bloody not. <laughs> the practical German thought, well, she's gotten out of the grave and come over. And he went, oh, God, no. So he didn't get the, the whole connection thing. So, <laughs> so yeah. I think we're very fortunate when we do money. Again, that's another aspect of life, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, um, and you can... choose to. We yes. choose to acknowledge it. We choose to to have a validation and a, and a um, someone saying we're here for you. Yeah, right. And that's our choice. And I think it's a, it's a real blessing because otherwise we can be very lonely. Mm. You know, because you don't fully know what's afterwards. You can only no. judge that. You know, hopefully things are good and and um, and the messages I get are that it's fine. Yes. You know. There's another um, party going on there. There is. And and I think it's sad when you can't acknowledge the passing of someone when you're so caught up in your grief and your anger. So now that's another big mm. um, emotion that shows through with, with passings of loved ones, especially unexpected passings, mm. and especially if it's a passing by your own hand. Um, the people living, you're at peace but people living are not at peace mm, mm. because they, they the questions just don't get answered. Why did they do it? How did they yes. do it? Why didn't they ask for help? You know, why didn't I know that they needed help? 
that's a big one. But it's a, again, it's a very private thing that someone has done, but it does cause a lot of grief and anger. Mm. And I know people that are still angry 20 years later. So how do they oh. move forward? You know, how do they, they're living their life, but they're living a shadow really life. They're not engaging. They're not celebrating the, the journey that the person had. Mm -hmm. Yes, that can be a toughie. Because the thing is, it's important that we realise that we're holding ourselves back. Mm. You know, it's the same as if we have an argument with someone who, who is still living and we hold on to that. Mm. You know, the other person's forgotten about it probably and they're, they're going on with their life. We're the ones who are affecting ourselves and it can get to the point where it affects our, our well-being. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so what can I do? Forgiveness is huge. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and you need to, and it's the same with, with your grief and your anger as well. You need to acknowledge it, enjoy it, if that's not the right word, but experience it, but then let it go. Mm. And, and there's many ways that you can do that. You know, you can do it with the, the balloons. So um, what I find some of the things I've got clients to do is to write a positive note that comes from the person who's passed. So I love you, say, or mm -hmm. um, I'm at peace or uh, my peace I give you, something that, that means that acceptance kind of thing and put that on a little piece of paper and put that into an unblown up balloon. Mm -hmm. And then you blow up the balloon and on the outside of the balloon write, write the expressions or the emotions that you're feeling, the grief and the anger and the loss and the loneliness and all of those kind of emotions that you might be feeling. Write them with a big felt pen on the outside of the balloon. And then go and gift yourself a pin or something that will pierce the balloon and burst it. So as you burst it, you're allowing all of those negative emotions to be poofed off into the universe. And that, you know, what a balloon looks like when it's melted, it's just all bleh. There's no, yeah. no substance to it at all. It's just this limp little thing. Um, the emotions have gone into that limpness. They've, they've, they've released out of your energy field and they've just gone into universal abundance. But then inside the balloon is this beautiful message. Mm. So you're replacing the negative with the positive. So the grief is being replaced by happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it can be very simple and very um, releasing. And and the sound that that balloon makes, especially if it's blown up really nice and big, as it's released, it's just this really really sharp sound that that is a real you know snap. Gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something, money that can be repeated as necessary. You know, if we feel yeah. that we're still hanging on and let's face it, some of those feelings can be deep down and yeah. we need to get to them. We help ourselves by doing so. Hidden emotions are as dangerous as cancer. A strong statement, but it's true. Like when the emotion is hidden and buried and not released and not acknowledged, it becomes a toxic black yuck, mm. right? Well, and it see, presents as that. Mm. My belief is that so much of our disease starts in emotions that have been mm. pushed mm. down rather than dealt with. Yep. So we need to. You, you're not telling someone to be that happy person that's never sad and that you're so jovial you want to knock their blocks off. You're not <laughs> trying to turn people into that. What you're trying to do is deflect or diffuse the constant negative energy, which is really, really heavy and very disheartening. Mm. So if you can help people with that journey, you know, can you do a practical thing? Like a lot of um, people that lose children um, convert some of the grief. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean they don't feel grief. They do. They feel it as strongly mm. as anybody. But they gather that grief and they make something out of it and they do something. So, you know, people that start organisations and foundations because of the loss of, mm. you know, I'm talking to a lady at the moment and she's got, I think it's sweet peanuts and she started it because they didn't feel they were able to um, help their grief when they lost a newborn baby. So wow. it wasn't at SIDS or anything. It was just this other thing that happened and, and they weren't prepared and they couldn't find the help that they need. A bit like me looking for palliative care when I was supposed to be looking at end-of-life care. Right. You know, they, they couldn't find services that would help them, like keepsake services and, and just support groups and different things that you need to know when that happens. 
Mm -hmm. So they've started this foundation and um, I'm in negotiations to make them a special spritzer that they can put in the package. So they're putting care packages in to leave at hospitals. So if it happens, the hospital chaplain can pass this parcel on, you know, and it's, it's giving them some form of direction or guide lights so that they can traverse the trauma and the, the numbness that happens mm -hmm. when that happens. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, I think it's amazing how many people have done just that when they've lost a child or a loved one unexpectedly. Yeah. And it is up to us to a point. Our friends, yes, we have support systems. The thing is, it's up to us to use those, isn't it? Mm. And it's up to us to acknowledge our feelings and respect them. However, if I am feeling down, sure, let me acknowledge that and then let me take that little step to say, well, what can I do? And this is where I like your list of things to do, Marnie. When, you know, when I've written down 10 things that I mm. like to do and so if I'm feeling down, it's like, well, okay, so how can I get out? How can I move from this yeah. to position or this feeling it's how do you lift yourself up or uplift yourself because yes. you don't always have people around you no and you might be surrounded by many people but you're needing that single space mm. you're needing your space yes yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll often use an egg timer as well <laughs> sounds bizarre right. but time your time your grief mm -hmm. like say to yourself okay well i'm just going to you know, feel this for a set time. So get your timer on your phone or an egg timer and, and when it turns over, when the sand has run through, go thank you for that, for the permission. Because that's sometimes we need permission to allow ourselves to feel these emotions. Because people will say to you, oh, you know, but it's it, you should be over it by now. It's five years mm -hmm. or it's one year or whatever. What right have they got? This is your business, not their business. Mm -hmm. But if, if you know that the grief doesn't stop on its own, that, that, it, that it does just keep pervading your, your whole energy field, give yourself permission to grieve for a set time and then mm -hmm. go, okay, after that time I'll have a shower, I'll wash my face. doesn't mean you're no longer sad. It just means, okay, I've been allowed to grieve. I've just wallowed in that grief mm -hmm. and it was wonderful. And I know some of the things I used after mum passed, um, I would, if I felt really, really sad and needed to cry, I'd watch a, a really sad movie mm -hmm. because although I was crying for me, I had permission because of the sad movie to cry. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It was yeah. kind of like I was using another reason to cry so I didn't look like I was just being a sort of Another really bizarre thing I used to watch was Say Yes to the Dress. It's a, it's a oh. show on Foxtel all about people picking wedding dresses and for some reason that made me cry. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I had no need to, but it was just, it wasn't something I had to think about or try and focus on. I could just watch and just watch the emotions of everything that was going on. And um, again, so find your show that, that gives you permission to share your grief with that show. Mm. And yeah. you don't feel as though you shouldn't be doing it. Another one, of course, is to put on a comedy. Or, yes, um, and laugh, yeah. And laugh. Or, uh, you cry. Mm -hmm. or music that will yeah. either allow you to release your emotions or pick you up. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. very much so. And then there's vibrational products. I mean, I'm, again, we're, we're, we're an Angel Heart radio show, so we play in the field of metaphysical. Okay, so metaphysically you've got your gemstone. So what gemstone connects you to that person's soul or what gem, gemstone makes you feel uplifted? You know, so you've got things like just your basic ones, rose quartz and tiger eye are two very good ones that you can work with grief. Mm -hmm. You know, rose quartz is all about looking after yourself and making sure you're you're okay, but it's also a very gentle stone. Um, for me, tiger eye is that strength and courage. It gives you that permission to keep moving forward. Have, do you know so, any of the gemstones you might use for, for grief? No. 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 I don't actually. I know people will quite quite often carry or wear a, a stone in, say, mm. women in their bra. Um, yep. That can be helpful or in a pocket. 
yeah. you can feel it. Um, hmm. Yeah, and then I make a um, I make my range of sprays. So I've got my. It's called Just for Mum, but it's one that you can use for grief. So it's got some ingredients in it that helps you cope with the grief that you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, vibrational energy finds so in your energy field there's a lack or there's an opening so you're releasing energy you're it's escaping so some of your positive energy is, is coming out of the little hole there so vibrational remedies often come along and plug that hole and, to, and sort of help you to feel better and mm -hmm. because sprays especially are connected to oils the oil has a direct connection to your emotional center so mm -hmm. it could be a memory center so the, the smell of say lavender brings forward this person's memory um, right. I don't know how you bottle cigarette smoke but for some people mm. cigar smoke is the is the link to the memory they'll smell cigar smoke and there's mm. none around mm. so I don't know how you would bottle that that would be a bit harder um, but what is the smell that you need to uplift yourself mm -hmm. you know, and, and what what other products are out there there's all the, the um, you know your bush flower remedies your shell essence which is my special one the shell essence remedies Kalala um, Bay Scallop is one that's very much about grief and it helps you to um, deal with anniversary day grief as well and anniversary mm -hmm. day blues. So it's a lovely gentle essence that just fills the space that you're feeling open and raw. It just helps sort of settle that a little bit. So, you know, there's things out there. It's a matter of finding them. Absolutely. And Marnie, you're a great resource. You have your banner in the back there. I Nick is where people who might be watching you for the first time if they're how uh... could that be <laughs> <laughs> how could they not have watched our show before Annette that's just that's <laughs> terrible to think that <laughs> oh there's a big wide world out there, there is, yes. <laughs> and if regular people need a reminder they yeah. can reach out to you at yeah. unique they can certainly can and and I and get a message to angel heart radio because we all the hosts get to see the the posts and everything on that as well so yes it's very much about yes. that people who are watching this show uh after uh can also make comments on angel mm. heart radio facebook yeah. page and you can ask questions that's what i <clears throat> i love about angel heart radio it's if you if there's something that people want to know specifically if they, there's a topic they'd like discussed or someone they'd like interviewed mm. it's, it's very much okay how can we serve absolutely the human race mm. Mm. so another i'm just it just came to me then another way so when you've got your celebration of life that you've got to go to a lot of people feel they need to be respectful so sometimes mm -hmm. the person that's passed has left a message saying, I want everyone to wear bright pink or blue or something like that. But other times you 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 bow to respect and, and normality and you think I must wear dark colours, you know, and things like that. And mm -hmm. I helped a, a client and her young daughter um, who cared for the, the lady's sister, which was the mm -hmm. child's aunt, right? So it was an aunt-sister relationship. And they cared for her through her cancer journey and her passing and they needed to be able to go to the celebration of life with some form of semblance of, of um, ability to be able to stand up and do the eulogy and stuff like that. And we, we, we came up with a solution that, that um, she needed to link to her sister in a way that was um, secret or like between the two of them, it didn't have to be out in the open. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, it turned out that through, you know, the, the muscle testing and everything that the colour purple was very relevant. Now, purple is a, is a colour of reverence and, and um, of healing and all those kind of things. But for her, it was just their favourite colour. Mm -hmm. So we came up with a solution that she could wear the outer clothes and, and have that as respectful for the family. But she went hunting and she found the most amazing set of underwear, like bra and pants that mm -hmm. were in this bright purple colour. And she said she could smile the whole time through because she knew she was wearing these amazing underwear <laughs> and that the sister would really appreciate it. But she wasn't offending anyone's sensibilities by wearing that colour out in the open. Mm -hmm. And her daughter wore a little amethyst necklace, which no. for her was appropriate. So mm -hmm. it was that whole um, secret message or that very special sister message that was happening at the same time 
other people weren't really aware of it. But she mm. said it just made things, it gave her the courage to stand up and, and be the person that she had to be for that day. Mm. And, um, yeah, she said she smiles so often in later times thinking about how that came through and how, how that message came through. And she said it was just perfect. Mm. You know, so what do you need to do to help you cope with the grief but being happy and, and pleased about some of the solutions that you're coming up with? Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Today more children seem to be involved in celebration. You know, in years ago, I know I was a teenager and yet wasn't allowed to go to my grandfather's funeral because um, it was considered... I guess too sad, I'm not sure. Yeah, anyway, no. I'm a welcome today's situation where, yes, children are involved. And I know there was a, a uh, service recently that I watched on Zoom and the grandchildren released bubbles at the end yeah, of the yeah, service. Yeah. Because they, I just went, they have to release their grief as well. Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, and so to involve... And I know that's happening more and more, isn't it? Um, processions mm. can be, or thing, items of significance can be placed um, yeah. either at the front, depending on whether there's a coffin or not. These days, quite often there isn't a coffin. No. Um, it's a, it really is a um, celebration of the life. Yeah. I know mm. that was one of, I mean, there was a lot of hard times, but that was one of my hardest things thinking how am I going to get through looking at this regular coffin mm -hmm. and the way we got around that was we were at the funeral home there was my dad and my brothers and I and we're looking at all the you know the stately things with all the handles and I'm going oh this is horrible and you didn't want to be there but you had to be mm -hmm. so you couldn't and anyhow we had this um, family thing that every time we live across, a, like you go across the bridge and you're into the area that you, you live in sort of thing. So we go mm -hmm. over the Pine Rivers Bridge and there was always this um, mum got seasick, right, so she wasn't a good traveller. And she told Dad once that she wanted to take a trip down um, the North Pine River or South Pine right. River, whichever one it was, North Pine. And Dad just said, oh, it'll be right, Carmel. So when, when, you, when you're when you dead, I'll put you in a cardboard box and send you down the river. And that was just a standing joke. And as mum would go over and I'm back again over the bridge, she'd look at the river and she'd go, I oh, know, not today, guys. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so it was just family, maybe maudlin, but it was just it was just part of some of the comments we used to make. Anyhow, we're in that funeral home looking for a coffin. And anyhow, I turned around and all of a sudden I saw these amazing coffins that were all decorative. And there was like a football one and an Australia flag. And then right on the bottom, there was this amazing photograph of a, um, of a river and the trees behind the river. So it was a river scene. And I, yeah. went, and I said to the guy, what are they? And he said, oh, well, they're just coffins. They're, they're called uh, vinyl wrap coffins. I went, right, can we have those? And he said, oh, sure. And, you know, we discussed prices and I jabbed out in the, in the ribs and I said, Dad, Dad, quick, turn around and look. What do you think of that one? And he turned around and he went, ah, the Pine River. <laughs> so we chose that one. And I know when I told my children that I'd picked a vinyl wrapped coffin, they were <laughs> mortified. They went, oh, my God, Mum, what have you done? <laughs> but when they saw it, everyone knew how perfect it was because the family knew the story. And right. it turns out it was made from a local producer and it actually was the uh, North Pine River in the photo. Right. It, was just, it was just perfect. And I could cope looking at that mm -hmm. up on the, up on the, the front area. Right. Then mm -hmm. we put her mug on one end and Bailey's on another and the flowers in the middle and it was more of a celebration. It wasn't that dark, heavy um, sure. wooden coffin. But it was something that was pro, and I've never felt comfortable to share that very much on, on pictures and stuff because it was a private thing. And some people would find that very confronting to see suddenly see a coffin in the middle of a, of a photo. But gosh, right. it was per absolutely perfect. Gorgeous. So, yeah. All of these lovely opportunities these days. I know other people quite often choose something that they can write on so that mm. there's lots of words to describe the children person. paint them and everything yes yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so I mean we we do have a lot more choice and and um 
I think what I would suggest is trust your gut feeling, trust your message from your heart because mm -hmm. that'll make you happier is the wrong word, but it'll make you more satisfied with the decisions that you're making. You won't live with regret. All right, so make your decisions based on your heart energy and what you know is right for that person. And don't be talked out of some things that you really want to happen because that's the regret that you have later on. That's the, you know, that's when it builds up because, oh, but I wanted to do this and I wasn't allowed. Mm -hmm. It just forms part of that toxic growth. Wow. I mean, it's a sad thing to talk about, but it, you, you need to be able to talk about it, don't you? You need to be able to relive your memories and your emotions, and but you need to you need to accept life. And, Absolutely. Um, you'll yeah. often hear people that are left when when it's just tragic. I mean, it's all tragic. I'm not lessening or lightening any one situation, but sometimes they seem more tragic than others, and you don't know how you're going to go through. And it's that knowledge that you hear for something else mm -hmm. the, the experience it hasn't been the reason you're here you didn't come here just to experience grief and death and things like that it just happens to be part of your journey but they then find a spark for something else and it, it can take time to find that spark but you just need to put one foot in front of that baby steps are beautiful don't yes. try and do it too quickly or or don't be told by other people how you to do the grief it's your no, grief. It is, and quite often our grief will lead us to helping others. We were talking earlier, Marnie, about how people, especially people who lose one through tragic circumstances and, and children. I know a family, several come to mind, where children have either overdosed accidentally or whatever. and then they use that as a as a spur to go and speak to other maybe school groups um and i look at the morcombs up in queensland yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they've committed their lives and so it's important to see okay well what can i do with my grief we might simply be helping one other person we're yeah. helping ourselves by helping others we're giving our life a purpose where we, where we suddenly think oh our lives have come to an end because we're losing someone no where that's helped us to go on to have a purpose hmm. and don't think that you have to be the spokesperson for something mm -hmm. like it, a lot of people grieve privately and then they do things privately. They're not always out on the stage. But then you also need, you, you know, with any yin and yang, you, you need the people that are more able to be in the public life and the mm -hmm. ones that aren't. But everyone plays a part in, in the journey of life. Absolutely. And it all becomes part of your fabric of life. And, you, and you, I call it a tapestry, you know, and, and little spots aren't filled in yet. So it doesn't matter because when you step back, you see the whole thing. You don't see the little spots that aren't filled in yet. Well, we all can make a difference. Yeah. And somebody said to me today, something about, oh, they were going, I said, oh, may there be love, joy, fun and laughter, the big four in your mm. life today. And this person said, oh, I'm going to work, I doubt it. And <laughs> I said, oh, well, it's up to you to create it. <laughs> yes, I mean, you're getting paid to go to work. You can go to work in COVID time. You know, there's a lot of blessings there exactly right again it's how we look at it no yeah. oh, i've got to do x y or z or oh my goodness this gives me an opportunity i'm meeting people i'm i've got the opportunity to help or who knows um sometimes life can be so overwhelming that you don't know where to start like it's just a big mush around mm. here so you need to start simple if you start complicated, mm -hmm. people aren't going to do it or try it because they just can't cope at that stage. They're already overwhelmed. So I know sometimes I get people to, when they first open their eyes, see if they can think of one positive feeling or thought. Mm -hmm. Don't try and make it too big. It could be just, oh, you know, I'm in my room or my pillow was great last night or I'm looking forward to doing something. But start the habit of, 
of a positive thought rather than, mm-hmm. oh, shit, it's another day. <laughs> you know, but setting your scenes, so you need the scene set to a more positive scene. So you start with that and that can seem such a simple thing to do, but honestly it gets you into the habit of looking for something positive as your eyes open up. Yep. Now, Agnes Vivarelli was on with me last week, Marnie. Agnes was saying that every morning when she showers, she thinks of 20 things to be grateful for. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yes, I think that's a fabulous idea. For some people it would be, Twenty. Oh my! I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I start start with one. One. Yeah, exactly. Build it to two. Build it to three. If you can start your day with that positivity, you can then start to implement the end of the day and write the things you were grateful for that have happened. So you set the scene by being positive by getting up. You Mm -hmm. you complete the circle by being uh, positive and grateful for whatever's happened through the day. And people think it has to be really big things. No, no, no. It could be just I got to eat lunch today. You know, it yeah. mightn't be a common thing. Or Before gee, three I enjoyed o'clock. That, <laughs> enjoyed that cup of tea I just had. Or it, it doesn't have to be big stuff. People, people get so caught up in in the um the hype of the magnificence of some people's lives. Everyday people are the ones that that you know they they achieve so much in their lifetime. They just don't realise how wonderful they are. So that's the other thing they need to say, I'm blessed and wonderful. Yes. Imagine starting up with that that statement every morning. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I was blessed a couple of days ago, Marnie. I was doing my usual thing in the supermarket and this young man from Woolies came along and said, would you like some flowers? Obviously oh. they had some that needed to be used. And I went, oh, I love you. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, it was just lovely. So yeah. you know, it's unexpected blessings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, like, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And look, saying thank you, that's another thing that raises your energies. Just say thank you to someone. Mm. We're we're looking at um my daughter's a vet and, and there's a lot of disharmony in vet life. There's um quite a few vets take their lives. It's got the highest um demographic of of suicides in any profession which is really sad yeah you don't it's quite confronting and and when another vet has passed they've got this symbol no not another vet Mm. now or something like that and it's a a little hashtag that they use and we were sort of talking about how can we as a as a community support our vets and staff and not always through monetary and we're sort of trying to come up with the concept of writing little handwritten cards and taking them to the local vet clinic and just saying, oh, we just thought we'd like to acknowledge what an awesome job you all do. And just mm-hmm. doing that that ripple effect and, and you just don't know if that card is going to make the difference between someone who's feeling a bit dejected or, or low because there's many reasons for it. It's not just one reason. Mm-hmm. So what can you do? There was an elderly lady at Redcliffe that used to go along and hand you a um, hi, your awesome card. She'd just randomly go to people's tables as she'd walk down to yeah, Redcliffe and give people a, a little gift. And, but it was such a lovely thing to do. Yes. You know, and, and such a nice thing to receive for no reason. Well, Marnie, you had smiley stickers that you used yeah, to. Yeah, I still use smiley stickers, yeah, yeah. Simple. And I do my talks. I take them in my stress bucket because I've got yes. the Henry stress bucket and I've got it full of smiley. And I, I usually do them in pairs, so I cut two at a time. And then mm-hmm. when I hand it round to people, I say they, they take some smile out of their stress bucket and they've got one for themselves and one for someone else at any time. It doesn't matter. So then Thank they can you. share their smile, you know, and, and um, it's just to, just something to uplift them and something that's simple that they can do that's easy. Yes, yeah. The little thank you cards or, or the thank you phone calls, especially mm. to uh, organisations. You know, we're very quick as humans to get on if we have a complaint how often do we simply stop to say thank you to the people yeah. who service in the supermarket or thank you to the customer service people i for what i don't like these surveys that are coming in but i no. like to thank the person themselves yes yeah, yeah. thank you for being so patient with me when i'm trying to do thank something you. <laughs> <laughs> i'm hanging up on you yeah yeah yeah, look, it, it doesn't take any effort whatsoever to smile and, and nod and, and welcome someone. 
and uh, you just don't know what sort of a day they're having. You're not in their shoes, you're not, not wearing their hat. So um, if you can share a smile with someone, so be it. That's awesome. Hello, Rosemary, how are you? Oh, isn't this lovely? They popped up on screen. <laughs> yeah. I just thought, oh, I looked at the time and it was 5-2 and I thought, I might get a couple of minutes with Marnie. Yeah, yeah well, yes. here I am. I'll be here <laughs> with Annette. Rosemary, you might like to tilt your screen a lot, uh, just a little bit so that we can see more. There oh, we go. Yes. Now we can Now see. we get you and not just your head. Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> There's I put the blind down a bit too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I go I, 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 I put down a bit age, of close curtains and turn on lights. Yeah. <laughs> at my age, Marnie, sort of thing, when I see myself on the screen, I go, ah! <laughs> I, like I know, you get it. used to it, but you, you just, and, I, and you, I never oh, know which way to tilt my head. I always end up tilting yeah. it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all backwards, I find. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, back to front. Yeah. yeah. yeah I know. I so I think I'm doing I, I think I'm tilting yeah. it right and I end up going sideways even more. So then I go, oh I, I, I go over this side. <laughs> well, and, I sort of wet and comb my hair and put some lipstick on and put my pen on. Yeah, good girl. Because yeah. I thought, oh, well, it's only voice, you know, and they won't see me. And then no. I thought <laughs> No, I, I, I got, <laughs> oh, oh, look at me. I've been out in the garden, you know, the hair was sort of all out here. And, Oh, no, but you I'm look beautiful. Oh, Very lovely you. with the beads and, and <laughs> your top and everything. So blue's oh, our yeah. colour. We, we're a blue oh. show. Yeah. yeah. And we can yeah. feel your like energy, it. Rosemary. Oh, thank you, darling. I, I like um, a bit of colour and things like that. Hey, girls. Yeah. See this book? Yep. Connect oh, yeah, connect with colour. Yep. Connect with colour. I had it years ago because she was a friend of mine, very close friend. She taught me art and all sorts of things. And I told a girl about it and she got it from Amazon.com, okay. who have free postage at the moment, because mm -hmm. it's $65, would you believe? Okay. And when she wrote it and Balboa charged her $65, she thought, well, I can't even sell this. So she let it all go, you know, and it was about or oh, 20, 15 years ago that she did yeah. it all. But it's so up to date. Yeah. And she's got a, a tip for every colour vibration. And I've wow. been using it with the group here. And, oh, look, it's fantastic. And I bought a couple of her bottles because she only just sells them to friends now, you know, sort of thing. And uh, the pink tip I thought I'd read on uh, for everybody today it's so good because pink helps reduce fear, mm. you know, and mm. when we were meditating, did you get my newsletter, Annette, that I, I sent did. out from the group? Yes. Yeah. And during the meditation, Marnie, somebody said, oh, I said, well, you know, I ask everybody, well, what happened during the meditation? Someone said, there was all this pink around mm. us. Yeah. And by the time she finished talking, everybody said, oh, I feel in the pink now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got out the book and read it, you know, what she says about pink. Yeah. And I thought, oh, it's so good to know. Yeah. You know, it it gets rid of fear and makes you feel good and things like yeah. that. Self-love. Yeah. Think self-love, exactly, yeah. money. Yeah. And we spoke about rose use... quartz a bit earlier, yeah. about the soft pink of, I call it coconut ice pink. It's that lovely, yeah. soft, yummy pink. That's right. But we don't think to use it during the day if we feel stressed and anxious, you know, things like that. Mm. And just breathe in the Breathe, pink. exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, so it was a good reminder. It was. It was. Yeah. yeah. I love using colour. <laughs> I, I use colour a lot with children as well because children um, can tell you what colour and emotion is. Well, do you know what? I was meditating and all of a sudden these words came in and I said to my friend, this is for your granddaughter. I said, you're supposed to buy this book. And she said, what book? And I said, connect with colour. And you're supposed to read it to your granddaughter who's seven. I said, because, money, you're right. I said, she already knows all about colour. Yeah, yeah. And it will just remind her what she already knows. Yeah, absolutely. So they, 
So they do, don't they? They know. Yeah. Well, you can color. say to them, what color is that feeling? And they can tell you. And then you can say, well, what color is a better feeling? And they can tell you that as well. Like, oh, that's a know. good thing to say. Now, thank you for that, because I'm going to say that to one of my clients who's a school teacher. Yep. Yeah. Right? Ask him to ask them what, what color that feels. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And what yep. color is a better, better feeling? Better choice. Thank yeah. you. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. My pleasure. That's really helpful. Sorry, Annette. <laughs> No, that's great. I love all of these little tips. Yeah. No, that's... Handy. Well, see, I feel we're meant to share these tips and yes. that's why I created my first newsletter from the group because I said it's meant to go to all the people who aren't here, you know, and, mm. and more, and then they can spread it. These tips are really good. Everybody knows something. Yeah, right? Absolutely. And, and mm. we were sort of saying earlier that, that our experiences can help other people in their experience as well. So Definitely. a shared experience is, is shared knowledge. And someone exactly. people sometimes think, oh, no one else feels this way or no one else knows how I'm feeling. But someone could, they, you, don't know, you don't know exactly what they're feeling, but you may have gone through something that helps them cope with what they, they're going through at the time. Fine. You know what? I wish I had a notepad for all of these. <laughs> <laughs> it's recorded, Rosemary. It's recorded. You don't need a notepad. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. I was hoping it would be. Like, hey, this is very good. I should be writing all this down. Yeah, no. I, 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 try, <laughs> oh, I used to try and do that, didn't I, Annette? And I'd be so busy scribbling, I'd forget what I was saying. So, But it's recorded. No, we don't need to. Wisdom is coming out straight out of your mouth, Marnie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it really is. And it's very precise and very accurate. Thank you know you. what I mean? It, it's sort of like... Some people say I'm just a boss. <laughs> <laughs> I even have my boss lady cup look. <laughs> oh, that's good. Can I just ask, did you, Annette, give Marnie the message I yep. got for her? Yeah. I believe Thanks. that um, it was released after the ceremony. They were just hanging it, on. It must be because I can't see it now. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. it's gone now. Yeah. I said to Annette, thanks for that. But I kind of, I didn't know exactly who it was, but I just thought they were hanging on to her energy to get through the day. Yeah. And it was one of the younger ones, I believe. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. So no, thank you for that. Yes, I was aware of it. I didn't share it up north, but I did share it. I did watch myself and go, okay, I know who that is. Yeah. So. Now, what's your surname? I've just got a... Perna. P-E-R-N-A. -E yes. In a, right, yeah. yes. So, no, wisdom. That's really good. Well, there you go. Wisdom. <laughs> Man, I, I say I, I give money-isms. They're the wisdom of my heart. So. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's wonderful. All right, yes. ladies, I might have to go. Okay. Well, are we up to that, Annette? We are. We yes. Are. Yes. So thank you so, once again for, for having me well, on the show with you. Thank you. It's and you ladies one. have a bit of fun now. <laughs> we will, yes. Ro Rosemary is here to share some thoughts and a meditation. So gorgeous. it's a lovely conclusion to the show. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. And I will talk to you in a month. Uh, okay. via, but Bye -bye. before then on Facebook and any other view. <laughs> oh, that, yes, absolutely. All right. Thanks, Annette. Thanks, Rosemary. Thanks. Have a great time. Thank you, Marnie, for your wisdom, love. That's right, love. Very Bye. Good. Bye. Bye-bye. Now, Rosemary, this is such a treat for our audience that you're not only going to share some wisdom with us, but you're going to lead us in a meditation, <clears throat> which is fantastic. Thank you. I enjoy leading a meditation. I don't know. We've all got talents, haven't we, Annette? And oh, absolutely. They yes. vary, you know, and it seems to be over the years, one of my talents is I just stop talking. <laughs> and one of the, <laughs> these words just come through my mouth, you know, sort of thing, are given to me. And, uh, and it seems to be helping people, you know, to meditate, which is important these days. Absolutely. Yes. Marnie and I were talking this morning, Rosemary, about how our experiences can help other people. And certainly you are a very wise woman who is happy 
to share with others. And you're constantly doing that through your home, through your meditation group, and also now through Angel Heart Radio, where obviously you're getting the words out there to the world, which is fantastic. It gives me great joy to be able to help people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I make a prayer every morning to Sai Baba and I say, I hope to spend today loving all, serving all. And that's my prayer for the day. And nothing pleases me more than to be able to help somebody. And I think what Marnie was saying before, we all have experiences and when you get to my age, <laughs> I've had a lot of experiences. And you can say to people, like I do phone sessions and I say to people, I know how you feel, you know, and you can relate to them and you mm -hmm. can advise them and help them. And because you've been through that yourself, you know, sure. you've had all these experiences. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to do to help people, I think. Yeah. Indeed. It makes you very happy. Well, it does. And the thing is, Rosemary, I know that you're out there in a, in a bigger way. However, everybody is able to support themselves and to support other people. And it might simply be a kind word, a smile, a, a flower uh, handed over or left on a doorstep. Who knows? We, we don't know just how we can impact. And I've learned that when I tune into my inner knowing, it's amazing. I'm guided to do things that are oh, very timely. Exactly. Can I share a story mm. that a friend of mine shared with me? She was driving up north to the country and it was a long drive. It was about six or seven hours. And she stopped in a little town and she didn't know the shops or where to get things and she walked into a cafe and she tried to get a sandwich for lunch and it was past lunchtime, just past. And they said, no, 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 kitchen's all closed, you know. Go down the street. So she went a couple of doors down and she went in there, no, 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 we're all shutting up now. You know, sort of thing. Go down the street and there's a bakery. So she walked down the street about 100 metres and she said it was a funny little arcade and she went into the arcade and got a sandwich and she, there was little seats outside the bakery and she sat down. She's eating a sandwich and on the seat next to her was a lady. And the lady was on the phone. And the lady, and she said, I couldn't, I wasn't listening, but I couldn't hear help overhearing because she was speaking rather loudly. And I could also hear what was being said to her. And the lady was saying, I just need somewhere to sleep tonight. I've got nowhere to sleep tonight. Can you help me, please? And she said, I heard on the other end of the phone, someone say, you're on the list. We've made a note of it. You're on the list. When it comes up, we will ring you in a couple of weeks. And the lady said, no, I need somewhere to sleep tonight and tomorrow night. I've got money to pay on Wednesday. I get my pension, but I've got nothing. I haven't got any money tonight. I need somewhere to sleep. I'm homeless. And again, the voice replied, you're on the list. We'll get in touch with you. Anyway, my friend said she got up and it was just, she said, I hesitated at first, but then it was a knowing inside me, like you're saying, what she was to do. And she opened a purse and took out $100 and went and put it in the lady's hand and said, get somewhere to sleep tonight and tomorrow night. And the lady looked astounded. 
and said to her, but, but I don't even know you. How mm. do I pay it back? And she said, you don't. You pay it forward. Right. And she left. And, but what my friend said to me afterwards, she said, Rosemary, it was incredible the way the angels or spirit worked to get mm. me there. Yes. Because the first two shops, I couldn't get a sandwich in. Mm -hmm. And I had to walk all that way mm -hmm. down the end of a town I didn't even know to sit on that seat to yes. hear her story. She said that was what was remarkable to me. Mm. And I just knew I had to, I was placed there for a reason oh. to help that lady. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful yes. story. Beautiful story. Yeah. Yes, I've heard yes. of people paying, going into a cafe and saying, you know, I'll pay for my coffee and for one for the next person who comes in. Or mm -hmm. um, yeah, someone who doesn't necessarily have to be the next person, I guess. Or somebody might be foster king for change in a supermarket and it's okay, just add that to my bill or whatever. No, simple little things that we can do. Simple little things. And as you said, the smile. Mm. The smile helps a lot. And being old, I can get away with it now. <laughs> I, <laughs> when I'm at the shopping oh, centre, <laughs> you know, I smile at babies. I smile at mothers with young babies and ask them how old they are and isn't it a beautiful baby. And I was sitting down, I was have trouble walking sometimes. And so I was sitting outside the seat in front of Coles and supermarket. And behind me was a man and a woman and they'd just come out of the supermarket and they had their trolleys. Mm -hmm. So they were sort of behind me and I'm facing this way because the seats were back to back. And... She's saying, no, I didn't buy any cake. Your blood sugar's right up. No, you can't. there was no <laughs> cakes without sugar in them. <laughs> and I don't know the children when they arrive, they'll just have to eat some fruit or something. <laughs> no, I didn't buy any cake. So, of course, I, being me now, and I, as I said, I can get away with it because I'm old. They think that's Ooh. centric, maybe, you see. I turned around and I said to them, is your blood sugar very high? I do know of something that can really help. And I told them about Nutricane D that was yes. tested in Melbourne Hospital for two years before it was released on the market. And I said, that would really help. So the man was so excited. He was writing the name down. And, and, she, and she was sort of looking very much Who's this lady you're talking to? <laughs> and I just left. I'm old, I can get away with this. <laughs> I'm talking to strange people. <laughs> and but he was so pleased that there is something that he heard of something that can help get his blood sugar down. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So we can do all sorts of things to help people. We can. We can. And John did a lovely thing coming out of a bunning store. And mm. a lady was coming with parcels, you know, and John was putting ours in the car and he went back and he said, where's your car? Can I help you to your car, please? You know, little things like that. Can I help you to your car with your parcels? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you feel as though you have an excuse because you're old. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> We all have we all have a purpose, and and you know that lovely friend of yours who happened to overhear the conversation. You know how special we yes we're placed in positions, I believe, to make a difference, and it's sometimes we're aware and we get the message and we we know what it is we have to do. I did that. Recently, I walked into a, a store. It was after the, the um, short lockdown here in Melbourne. And there was nothing in the store that I needed. And yet I thought, here's a woman who is opening her store. They're 
is nobody around. Um, my goodness me. And I'd walked out and I was looking at some things at the front of the store and the, there was still nothing that really mm. my fancy. And yet I wanted to do something for the woman. And I did. I went back in and said, buy yourself a drink or, or do something at the end. Oh, no, 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 she said. And I said, yes, please. No, you've got this, this store. I didn't know her story, uh, but I do know that shopkeepers are finding it very, very difficult. Some of them who are still in business, I reckon they're, they're just hanging on because sadly so many have, um, have lost out. They just couldn't keep going. So it's wonderful to be able to, as you say, Rosemary, pay it forward. Definitely. Definitely. That's a lovely story too. And, and as you say, everybody can, not just old people like me. That's right. Everybody can. Yes, we can all we can all make a difference. We can well, all make dear, a difference. I'm I know you're going to make a difference because you're offering a meditation. I think it's more important than ever. To be aware, to be aware of the feelings like you say. If you were lost in thought, you wouldn't notice things. You wouldn't notice your feelings. You wouldn't be listening to your intuition. The energies at the moment, as you probably agree, coming onto the planet are very, very intense, mm -hmm. very high, and we need to integrate them into our bodies. Otherwise, I know people have been complaining of heart palpitations and things like this, headaches. And it's, I'm told that the energies coming onto the planet are from Arcturus, which is a wonderful star, wonderful energies of love, but the vibration of them is very, very strong. And so it's important to empty out our mind. Our mind never shuts up. Some days I say, oh, <laughs> shut up. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> oh, goodness me, I get tired of it. So mm. if we just listen to a meditation for a few minutes, these short meditations, you can Google them. I've put even one out that just help your awareness. So if we do one now, and I hope it'll help people be more aware, more conscious. And I'd like to, during the meditation, I think I'll be given words to expand their consciousness and take them up mm -hmm. higher and higher. So let's see what I'm given, okay. Wonderful. All right. So, I'm just getting comfortable and I'll shut my eyes. Feeling the weight of your body on the chair. Bring your awareness to your body and your feet. Feeling your feet on the floor. And breathe. Be conscious of the breath. Going in and out. Now you've become more aware. Feel the temperature of the air on your skin. Is it cold? Is it warm? Feel your whole body sitting on the chair or wherever it's sitting. Become aware of the sounds around you. Perhaps you can hear a clock ticking. Traffic outside. Keep your awareness on the whole body at the same time as you're listening.
Taste the taste in your mouth. Now take a deep breath in to the count of four. And breathe out to the count of five. This stops the thinking. Breathe in to the count of four. Breathe out to the count of five. One more. Breathe into the count of four. Breathe out to the count of five. Expand your awareness. To include the whole room and outside the building or further away if you're sitting already outside. Let it expand. Let it go out further. Set your consciousness free to expand even further. That's it. Let it go out to the ocean. Up higher, slowly rising higher. Higher, higher. Going up. Now you can see colors. Beautiful colors. It's like the aurora borealis, there's greens and pinks, lemons, yellows, beautiful. And you're still going up. You're being taken up to the fifth dimension, I'm told. where the angels and archangels are. Beautiful energy of love and peace, harmony. Let your imagination show you Archangels coming to meet you. Archangel Zedekiel, Haniel, Michael, Gabriel, so many archangels greeting you, loving you, Makes you smile, makes your heart happy. You feel so peaceful. You feel like you belong here. You're resting. Resting your mind your bodies, your whole self is at peace. 
I can see a beautiful pink. Notice what colors are around you. Their vibrations and they've come to help you, to comfort you, to heal you. Breathe them in. Allow them into your consciousness. Now you thank the archangels. There may be one in particular who's going to accompany you back and stay with you and assist you. Thank them. And slowly you come back, back, slowly you come down, bringing the peace with you and the rest and the harmony and the love. Bring it back down with you into your physical body, into your etheric body, your mental body, your emotional body, your spiritual body, because now they're all aligned and you are whole. You are whole. Breathing. Bring your consciousness, your awareness back to your physical body. Taking your time. Perhaps you're wriggling your fingers. Archangel Michael's with me, and I'd like to thank him. And I always say, Michael, thank you for protecting us when we open our consciousness to meditate. Thank you for allowing only love to enter. Our bodies are filled with love, Michael. And peace. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Opening our eyes. Oh, you might like to gently stretch. Oh. oh. Good idea. Wiggle those toes. Oh. Rosemary, what a gift you have and what a gift you have given us. Thank you. Thank you. I just hope this is recorded because I can never remember anything when I come back. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yes. So, And that's the beauty of technology today because our audience and listen again and again and again, which is fantastic. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I have so enjoyed being with you again on Angel Heart Radio. And I'm in my heart, I'm saying hello to all the people I've met before and oh, welcome them, you know, saying hello. It's lovely. 
Well, it is lovely, Rosemary, and I hope that maybe this can become a regular uh, occurrence because you're a very special lady and you have so much to share with the world. And as you say, this is a very important time uh, and we all need to know just mm. how important we are to this world and how important it is that we live through love as much as we possibly can. Did I just read two lines of this book about pink and Please leave them do. with this? These words. A pink tip. Pink is an antidote to fear. Fear-based thinking can absorb the light in the colours of your aura and send your energy dull, dark and out of balance faster than the speed of light. Pink, use pink. Think pink, I'm thinking, when you're feeling unloved or don't feel good. Pink will balance your energy and bring the light of love back in. Beautiful. Lovely to finish on pink. I hope everybody's in the pink. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Annette. Oh, thank you, Rosemary. And thank you to our audience today. Thank you for being with us. May you spread your love, your light, your magic, and make this world a better place. Bye for now.